the Space Shuttle Discovery set for launch. In fact, it is almost go time, if you will. Live pictures there. Uh, CNN Space Correspondent Miles O'Brien is standing by live at Kennedy Space Center now in high definition. Boy, this is uh, going to be quite the event there, Miles. Heidi, our first uh, high-definition launch on CNN. Looks like uh, it's going like clockwork. Inside three minutes now to launch. Joining me now to walk us through this is somebody who's been through this experience uh, many times, four times to be exact, twice as a commander, Eileen Collins, the only other woman to be a commander. Pam Melroy, the second woman to be commander, is commanding this mission. What are the astronauts doing right now? Well, they're very focused on the launch countdown. Everything uh, at this point on is primarily automatic inside of two minutes. So they're going to be watching uh, the main engine start. Um, they're going to be watching the commands go out as you get close to um, uh, booster separation. And of course, as the shuttle is flying, Pam will be watching uh, the direction, the performance of the shuttle, while uh, Zambo, the pilot, is going to be watching the systems. And they're ready to intervene if anything goes wrong. And they've shut their visors. You can see that at the top, the so-called beanie cap, the gaseous oxygen vent hood is being removed right now. That takes uh, uh, very cold oxygen gas away from the tank and re uh, reduces the amount of ice that builds up in this. With one minute to go, this, this is a very important mission to deliver an important piece to the International Space Station. Isn't that's it? right. The Node 2, which is the connecting device from the pieces of the, the Destiny Lab that's up there right now, will be connected to, soon to come, the European Columbus module, which will be their science laboratory, and then the Japanese Kibo module will be up there hopefully in the springtime. Have you ever seen a more complicated space shuttle mission? This is incredibly challenging. This is a very, very challenging mission. The astronauts make it look easy, the ground team makes it look easy, but frankly, they are just, they're working minute, very hard and they're very, seconds. very well and trained they're and they're also the trained for things that could go wrong and as we continue the countdown right now he asked me what uh pressure. pam and the crew were thinking about they're ready for the normal launch which is what they hope is going to happen but they have to be ready for anything that might go wrong count. and there are millions of things as you know that could go wrong so they're trained and they're ready for that all right we're inside a minute now we've gotten through weather issues today a little bit of an ice buildup on the external fuel tank both of those issues been cleared by the launch control That's team and mission control the mission the management yeah, team as we approach 40 seconds to launch let's listen to nasa Mike Curie is the public seconds. affairs officer here at the Kennedy Transfer Space Center. In a little while, you hear Kylie Clem, who will be uh, offering some commentary from Houston. Let's listen for a moment in the final stages of the countdown of and Space Shuttle Discovery. Auto sequence start. Discovery's onboard computers have primary control of all the vehicle's critical functions. T minus 20 seconds. T minus 16 seconds. Sound suppression water system has been activated. Protecting Discovery and the launch pad from acoustical energy. We have a go for main engine start. T minus five, four, three, two, one. Booster ignition and liftoff of Discovery. Hoisting harmony to the heavens and opening new gateways for international science. Discovery has cleared the tower. Houston now controlling. Roll program. Roger roll, Discovery. Discovery's roll maneuver is complete. It's now in a heads down position on track for its flight to the International Space Station. Discovery, seven miles downrange at an altitude of two statute miles. Flying at 600 miles per hour. Discovery's engines are throttling down as the orbiter passes through the area of maximum pressure on the vehicle. Now 50 seconds into the flight. About this area of maximum Discovery pressure, what do they mean by that? The well, it's the highest the stresses that the vehicle will go through as far as speed and air pressure combined. Discovery Houston, go with go throttle, throttle up. up. This is the uh, famous call, which we all harkens back to Challenger. After they get through that period of time, they actually hit the gas again, don't they? Yeah, the go with throttle up call just is really a comm check to let them know they're able to talk to each other fine. Um, they're coming out of the area of max pressure. You can see the boosters are burning very, very smoothly. They're going to burn for two minutes. Um, we have cameras on those boosters, so when they separate, you're going to see um, a, a great view of the boosters falling away, but they're really there to look for ice and debris that may uh, fall off the tank. What are the astronauts feeling right now? Is there they're, a tremendous amount of pressure on their seats? They're feeling a very high acceleration right now, uh, about two and a half Gs. For example, if you weigh 200, if you weighed 100 pounds on Earth, you'd weigh 250 pounds right now. You're being pushed back into your seat. There's a lot of shaking going on. 
Um, if you tried to write something, you wouldn't be able to because your hand is uh, moving so much. But again, they're focused on their instruments. They're focused on the systems. Are the engines running right? Are the APUs, hydraulics, electrical systems? And it looks like everything is going fine. Here's the boosters falling away. Right. Solid rocket booster separation. That's a very important milestone. Well, we're good to see those boosters off. As you know, the crew cannot control those. We can't we can't throttle them or shut them off. They're uh, like ballistic, a Roman candle, basically. Right? They're, they're an open loop ballistic system, and when they're gone. Um, you, you're just glad they're gone because now you have your main engines which can be shut down or throttled if you see there's a problem. Now as it gains altitude and speed you have increased options if something goes wrong. Walk us through the scenarios. If something happened very early after launch they conceivably could come back here on, on an abort mission but there are other scenarios as well. Well the crew is, um, the, the boosters just separated 150,000 feet and the next big key word that they're looking for is the two engine tau. Here, okay two engine Marone which means if they lose one engine and they have two good engines left, they can abort across the ocean and land in Spain. Marone, Spain, in other words. Yes. So they're telling the crew, if you lose an engine, you go to Spain now. And that's, that's a big right. deal right there because you don't want to have to come back here. Well, it, it is a big deal, but fortunately, there's a crew over there. There's landing aids. It's a safe thing that can be done. Um, so we pl we've never had to do it, but we plan for it. And it's, it's good to know that you have that option. The next thing coming up will be negative return, which means at that point in time, if you lose one engine, you have so much forward velocity that you can't turn around and come back and land in Florida. So um, it takes, completely takes away the return to launch right. site scenario. Right. There's, there's um, an overlap there where you can yeah. either land in Spain or come back here. But right. we'll lose that overlap soon. What, what happens now is you start picking up East Coast landing sites. You can land up the East Coast um, in the northern states or even in Canada. And then we also pick up um, Shannon in, du in Ireland as well as a site uh, in Portugal. So there's any number of options that the crew, and, and that's what you're doing right there. You're going through your mind, here's what I would do if, right? Right, and by the way, the crew is in a much nicer uh, environment right now because all that shaking is gone and I like to tell people Discovery, Houston, it's like going from return. you know driving a Volkswagen down a rocky road to you know being in a nice uh, smooth car you know driving along at 100 miles an hour it's just very very smooth the crew is now able to uh, to write if they want they can uh, easily move switches um, it, it, really that's kind of a little breath of fresh air they're under very low uh, G acceleration right now eventually they're going to build up to two G's two and a half three G's and You'll be back in the situation where, like, if you weigh 100 pounds on Earth, you'll weigh 300 pounds during this high acceleration. To reach for switches is hard. Um, if you drop something, forget it. It's going to be gone. <laughs> You're not going to be able to retrieve it. And we train to work under those scenarios. You've got to be able to um, do your job, move switches, make radio calls, run checklists in this very strange environment that you never were really able to experience on Earth. That uh, uh, environment really of high acceleration. As many simulators as you go in, you can't simulate that very well, can you? You, can't si you cannot simulate the G level in our uh, simulators. You have to go into a centrifuge to do yeah. that. So at this juncture, they're, they're, uh, uh, we, it's eight minutes, eight and a half minutes of powered flight, and we're how far into it right now? Okay, we just went over five minutes. We're coming up to the press to ATO call, which will be uh, press to a point in time, which is abort to orbit, meaning if the crew lost an engine, they wouldn't have to go in and land in Spain. They could go all the way up to orbit and continue a safe mission. And at this point, is, at what point do you breathe easy, if ever, during this? Uh, I don't know process? if I ever breathe easy. Yeah. <laughs> um, even after a main engine cutoff, you, there's a lot of important things that have to happen. Okay, there's the select, uh, there's the... Uh, okay, so the press to ATO, okay. what does that mean? Okay, press to... Discovery can now reach a okay. load plan. Okay, single engine ops three. Now, what happens here is if they lose two engines, the single engine ops three call three. says... They can go over to, in this case, the, the landing site in Europe, which is in Spain. Um, they're accelerating so fast right now that every second of it, here's the roll to heads up if you're watching, um, the shuttle is at about 9,000 feet, in, or I'm sorry, it's about 9,000 miles per hour and it's over 200,000 feet. And the reason we roll to heads up is to allow the crew to communicate with the satellites in orbit versus the... So you go from talking to the ground to talking to satellites. That's right. Go for the pitch. What a view that is. Okay. And, and I know this view does not do it justice. Can you can you try to describe it? For well, me? you're going so fast. I, I don't know <laughs> how to say it other than you're hauling. And if you look down at the Earth, the Earth is... You're actually at a relatively low altitude here. And the Earth is Has just... Position uh, it's going below you so fast that... I gotta tell you, you're not supposed to be looking out the window. 
<laughs> the commander and the pilot are supposed to be looking at their instruments. And again, you're, but you, you snuck a be peek, ready. right? Well, you're gonna, sneak, you're gonna sneak a peek Six because it's, it's point, part of the experience. But it's really hour. important for the crew to be, again, watching all those critical systems because if something goes wrong, you may have just less than a, really less than a second to make the right decision. So at that point, uh, uh, you, get to, you get to the point where you take the straps off. You go from three Gs to zero. What okay. is that experience like? Okay, well, we're, that's going to happen about one minute from now. We got about one minute to main engine cut off. Things don't go flying forward. You would think when the main engine's cut off, you decelerate. You don't. You go immediately from three Gs to zero Gs. And is that... Is that a difficult experience for the astronauts to get used to? Actually, it's quite an exhilarating experience. When you go from 3Gs to 0Gs, first of all, you know you've made it. You're in space. I know there's a lot of critical things that still have to happen in the main propulsion system. Um, the tank has to separate. Valves have to close. Um, but right now, they're going through that 3G acceleration. And it, it's hard. frankly, it's hard to breathe. And you have to kind of get your breathing under. Uh, Discovery's engines are now throttling back. Here go, okay, well, they're throttling Control back to keep from going over 3Gs to keep the stress gravity. low on the shuttle. Seven minutes, yeah. um, the shuttle is really certified up to um, just a slightly above 3Gs. So if the, if the throttles don't come back on their own, the pilot's prepared to do the throttle back himself. The throttles will come all the way to the minimum power setting briefly, and then the engines will shut off and things will go immediately quiet. About 10 seconds will go by, and then the external tank will separate. You hear a loud pop. It's like a howitzer gun. It just, and you go, OK, I know I'm safely away from the tank. And then the shuttle jets will fire and fly you up and away. And you're going to see this on the feed that we have here. OK, notice that what you've got main engine cut off in the back. Right. It looks yep. like a little shock wave. Kind of a little plume there. Main engine cut so off. So how long before okay, we, the tank goes? OK, burn. notice there's a little pitch down. Uh -huh. And it, I think it's, it'll vary, but I think it's about it's between 10 and 18 seconds after main engine cut off that the tank will separate. Now, notice there's some debris uh, coming off the tank. That's normal, nothing to worry about. OK, there, the shuttle is separating. There goes Discovery. And you'll see the shuttle jets fire. External tank separation is also And that debris confirmed. you see there is of no consequence. Yeah, that's normal. You're going to have yeah. things fall off the tank once you, and of course, the, the, the shuttle is out of the atmosphere, so it can't Nine hit minutes you. into the flight, yeah. Discovery and her crew And of course, the crew right orbit. now is taking pictures of that tank. That's Standard part of the, right. the post-Columbia routine. Okay. Okay to see if there was oh, any George sort of foam Sanchez. or debris which came off. Yeah, that'll, that'll be analyzed Wilson. later. That's very important. There's a camera in the back of the shuttle that automatically photographs the tank. Then Pam will fly. She will the flip the shuttle around. And the crew members will required. videotape and take we'll some digital photographs of the contact. tank. And they'll send those down to the ground. And the engineers will analyze how the tank do. How It looks good to me in this picture right here. It looks like we've got good intact foam there. Hard to say, though. So There'll be high resolution images the, later. This uh, tank, of course, ends up disintegrating and falling mostly into the Indian Ocean. Only significant piece of the space shuttle system that isn't reused. Those solid rocket boosters that you saw that uh, dropped off after Vanka, a couple of minutes get fished out and reused. That's and of right. course, the orbit will come back. They've got a tough mission ahead of them, uh, Eileen Collins and uh, Pam Melroy has work cut out for them. Well, I'm really happy for the crew. You know, they've been training for this for so long, and Pam finally got her chance as a commander. She's a, she's doing a great job. I'm really proud of her. I'm proud of her crew. And keep an eye on the mission. We've got 14 days of just some exciting action up there. Five spacewalks to come, putting in that. A very crucial harmony node, which is kind of like the, the circular piece in a Tinker Toy set, which allows other pieces to connect. That's right. It's about the size of a living room, a, a typical living room in, in your home. Although you, you don't just use the floor, you can use the whole space because it's zero gravity. <laughs> Eileen Collins, pleasure having you walk us through uh, uh, the first high definition launch on CNN of the Space Shuttle Discovery on its way now to a two week mission to the International Space Station. Heidi? CNN's Miles O'Brien uh, recording history for us there out of the Kennedy Space Center alongside uh, former Commander Eileen Collins. Uh, boy, what a thrill in HD for the very first time ever. What a great launch.